the trainer for this course. I am going to the trainer for this course. I am Shaker. I am a working professional. And I have 16 plus years of experience. Okay, guys. So coming to this course, guys, if you have any queries and all, you can just ping it in Q and A so that we can able to discuss about them. Okay, that's for sure. So coming to the session, guys. Uh, let's understand about what are the prerequisites to attend this course. And uh, guys, this is a free session. Okay. It's a free session for all. It's a free session for all. And this course is going to be around for three weeks. Okay, three to four weeks the sessions will be conducted. Okay, three to four weeks, the sessions will be conducted. It's a free session for all. And let's understand about what are the prerequisites for attending this course. Okay. So we are offering from our Ashok IT organization, we are offering this hibernate with the GPA session as a free session for all of you guys. I'll tell you prerequisite and who should learn this hibernate JP. All these things I will explain you. Okay. So coming to prerequisites, you should have some basic understanding of JDBC technology. Some basics of JDBC technology is required. Okay, guys. Prerequisites is basics of JDBC technology. And guys, you know, some basics of SQL is also recommended. Right. And of course, you should have some core Java skills. Like collections. If you know about some Java 8 features also, it is, I welcome you, but may not be, but some collection knowledge is required, working with the list, working with the set or map, some collections and writing some, having knowledge on setter and getter methods, creating attributes with respect to setters and getters about constructors. So this kind of, Basics of the core Java programming is sufficient. Basics of SQL is sufficient. Basics of JDBC technology is sufficient to attend this session called Hibernate with JPA. Okay, guys. Now let us. Okay, let us start with what basically we are going to concentrate on this hybrid JPA. Now I would like to ask a question, guys. Okay, do you do you people have all these things? Basics of JDBC, basics of SQL and core Java. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, okay. Sagar saying yes, yeah. Arvind says yes, okay. Safiuddin saying yes, good, good. Kiran, yes, right. Good. Yeah, yeah, chart is disabled, right? So you can just use Q and A. Yeah, Gaurav Pandey says, yes, very good, good. So almost all the people, yes, very good. All the people who are attending this session, you all have the knowledge of this. Okay, Rabindra Kumar is saying, yes, okay, very good, nice. Many of the guys you are saying, yes, correct. Very good. Sahul, Sahul Shinde is saying, yes, okay. Ramesh Naik is saying, yes. 
Sumit is saying yes, very good, good. Okay, in Q&A, you can just try to write your questions, uh, okay? So, yeah, guys, this is good, very nice. Good to see, many of the people responded, yes, very good, it's good to see. So, means you are all, you are all welcome to this session. You can happily go into learn this session for a free of cost. And it's going to be a complete session. Hibernate the JPA, we are going to discuss with a complete session. And uh, I just, I'll, I'll try to give you everything, mostly with the support of annotations and in the duration of three to four weeks, we are going to complete this. Okay, within a short time, I want to provide you a very good knowledge, whichever is required for industry. Okay, so let's continue the session, guys. It's good to see all into this session. I welcome you all to this session. Yes. If you don't have any much knowledge on JDBs also, there will be no issue. And uh, let us come to the session, guys. There will be no recorded sessions will be given. As it is a free session, there will be no recorded video. Somebody is asked here, then can we get the recorded videos? I would like to tell you one thing. Right. I want to write here by better so that everybody can understand. Okay. So, so no recorded videos. Guys, no recorded videos are given. Got it? Okay. Class notes will be shared with our Ashok Ketty portal. Class notes will be shared in our Ashok Ketty portal. Okay. Every day. And uh, coming to examples, guys, examples will be shared. I'll tell you, example will be shared with Git repository. Okay, guys. So class example will be shared with the Git repository. Class notes will be shared in Ashoka T web, our website. And uh, as it is a free session, there will be no recorded videos, guys. It's only the live sessions. And you have to come and attend regularly the sessions in order to understand this complete session of Hibernate with JPA. OK. So many of the people have a doubt, guys. The doubt is, do I need to learn Hibernate? Because people are talking about Spring, Spring Boot, or microservices, right? The people are talking about all these things nowadays in the market. Okay. Now, is it required to learn this Hibernate with the JPA? That's a question. Guys, that's a question you have, right? Sure. I'm just going to give us the completely what concepts we are going to focus on. I'm going to tell you the course content I'm going to tell you. Like, what we are going to discuss in this Hibernate with JPA. Do remember this one point to keep it in mind that even though we are offering it as a free session, but everything will be discussed here. Everything will be discussed. Whatever is required for industry-based applications, that everything will be discussed in our sessions, guys. Okay. So let me talk about the... Uh, okay. The question is, do I need to learn? Hibernate. Guys, why? Because people are talking about Spring, Spring Boot, Data, JPA. People are talking like that. Then you have a doubt like, do I need to learn Hibernate? This type of question comes. Okay, absolutely the answer is yes, you have to learn. If you want to understand internals and if you want to explore, okay, those who are Suppose you are not planning for Spring or you are not planning to learn Spring Boot or you know you are not planning to work with microservices, then absolutely you no need to learn. Because nowadays all applications are Spring with Spring Boot and microservices based applications. But we have a concept called as a Spring Data JPA. Okay, guys. We have a concept called Spring Data JPA. Everyone. 
So if you want to understand about the internals of that, you should have the good knowledge on Hibernate. I'll tell you what is JPA, what is Hibernate and what is the relation between them. That is also we are going to discuss, of course. Okay, I'll start the sessions a bit slowly initially and later we will discuss more fastly because today you attended, but many of some other people may plan to attend from tomorrow. So in one, two days, uh, then the all the people gets attended. After that, we will stop uh, taking the new people into this session and let's continue further with all the details. Do I need to learn Hibernate? The answer is yes. If you want to work with Spring, Spring Boot, right? If you want to work with Spring, Spring Boot and microservices. If you want to work with Spring, Spring Boot and microservices, answer is yes. Right? No. If you don't want to, if you don't want to work as a Java developer, got it, right? Yes, if you want to work with Spring, Spring Boot, and microservices. No, if you don't want to work as a Java developer, then you don't need to learn, obviously. Not only this, I burn it, no need to learn nothing. Right. So, hope. Right. Hope you guys have understood about this, right? Good. So basically now every Java developer has to work with this only Spring, Spring Boot and microservices only. But if you want to work with them, you also need to learn Hibernate. If you don't want to work as a Java developer, okay. That's your wish. Then you don't need to learn this Hibernate. Right. And uh, this in this course, what we are going to discuss initially, basically we want to understand today only the concept like what is a course content, what initially we are going to start with. Okay. Now let me tell you guys. Let me tell you. Okay. Coming to the course content. Okay. Any have we will provide a course content paper. You can also download from our Ashoka T portal directly. But still, just I would like to give you because some of the people want to know, very curious about what are going to be covered in this session called Hibernate with JPA. So initially, first I'm going to give you something about data persistence. Today, actually, I'm going to start with a little bit concept on this data persistence. What is the meaning of data persistence and what are the components in persistence? Okay, you will get some good theoretical knowledge and also more practical knowledge. That is the advantage of attending this session, guys. Okay. Initially, we are going to look at that. So then we are going to understand about why we need actually the ORM tools. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping Tools. Why ORM? We are going to learn first. Okay, so then I will introduce about the Hibernate. This is introduction, architecture, those things will come into picture. Okay, so once you got the idea of what Hibernate is and what are the benefits of using Hibernate. And next you'll understand about how Hibernate works. That's architecture we can call. What are the different files required to work with Hibernate? So you are actually going to learn all these things in the initial stages. Okay. So once you got this, then we will understand about what Hibernate and what JPA. What is this? Is both are same? Is both are different? That is what actually we are going to discuss. 
okay so writing the applications with jpa writing the applications directly with hibernate api what is the difference that you are going to learn that's what i told jpa versus hibernate that's what the next point what we are going to discuss guys right so once you got something like jpa versus hibernate then if i want to start creating an application first of all you should have the maven knowledge so i just want to give you something about maven it's a build tool so we are going to just look at some basics on this build tool that is maven and once we got maven as a build tool guys everyone got it so then next we are just going to discuss about xml versus annotations based mapping okay there are lot of things we are going to discuss here and which definitely help you increases a lot of knowledge i am sure about that so next okay i am not telling this point just because of its a first session everybody do remember this with all my experience i am going to give you this examples and with all my experience i am just going to give you this course content so definitely this will make your head as more weighted that i can assure absolutely okay guys so once we got xml versus annotation so then you got an idea of writing xml based mapping annotations based mapping and what are the annotations i have to use so we are actually going to look at into all these kind of things xml versus annotations so then we will discuss about basic crud operations okay then we will discuss about hibernate caching okay so once you got an idea of hibernate caching then i will talk about what are hibernate generators they are called id generators better word id means primary key generators i am just going to give you some content guys look at all these things okay then you will understand about what is composite mapping i think you know about composite primary key right so composite primary key is basically used for what when there are combination of columns are used as primary key in the table then we are calling it as a composite primary key so composite mapping is also going to be discussed got it right so once you got an idea of composite mapping guys you know what next we are going to look at i will tell you we have a concept called hibernate inheritance okay so how we can map a subclass with its superclass to the database tables that is what actually called as hibernate inheritance so that we are going to look at and once you got an idea of hibernate inheritance we'll also understand about hibernate entity states so now here you are going to get an important concept this and from here actually the very important concept which required mostly in our real time applications these are all composite mapping id generators caching these are all very much important but now the next concept actually we are going to discuss is called as relationships that is actually called as association mappings which is basically called as relationships which is also 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 called as associations which is a very big topic and this is what everybody must know and basically this is called as what uh, like one to many association how we can provide how can we map many to one association how we can map this kind of mappings we are going to discuss in hibernate relationships and this is going to be a very uh, you know the important concept and later once it is done guys i'll tell you you know once it is done actually this only will take more time because of here we need to focus more on this and once it is done they will discuss about what is filtering in hibernate we are going to look at about hibernate filters 
okay right so basically uh once we discuss about all the hibernate filters there are some miscellaneous concepts are there which we use to work with in the real time applications like getting the statistics like which query is taking performance related they are called statistics they are called statistics so those statistics also we are going to discuss that is called i just given it as a miscellaneous concepts mostly we are going to focus on all these things and uh, we are initially going to start with the hibernate then we'll talk about jpa then we'll discuss about jpa and hibernate and how do we code with jpa how do we code with hibernate and later we will start we will use write the code with the jpa api and we will use hibernate as a implementation for it so a lot of things we are going to discuss in this course content but i need to cover all this course content within a month right three to four weeks i'll take to cover all these things so for that your support is also required nothing but you need to grasp it firstly and of course anyhow i'm going to share the course uh, the class notes and also the examples in the session what we are discussing right but you need to attend the sessions very uh, regularly then only you can follow up otherwise if you miss one class then the next class maybe it's going to be different for you that's the reason why you people need to attend this session very very regularly okay right so now uh here actually i missed one more point under miscellaneous only actually i'm going to also talk about concept called as hibernate lockings when so what is optimistic locking what is pessimistic locking okay right so how or what type of locks should be used at what place this locking is also very very important and uh, in the miscellaneous concepts only we are also going to discuss about a concept called as transactions somebody has reminded me here really i'm going to i actually forgot this that is also i'm going to cover okay it doesn't matter if for example it is not going to finish in a one two three to four weeks i'll take one more week extra it's not a big thing okay you don't keep it in mind that okay how this is all going to be completed in this within a stipulated time of three to four it's not i i just i just gave approximately but not exactly it all depends okay we'll understand about hibernate locking and we are also going to discuss about transactions okay so these are all we are going to look at here okay somebody is in chat box is asking about fee i told already guys it is a free session hibernate with the jp is a free session guys you no need to pay any fee for us we are offering it as a free for all our candidates okay so whoever is attending this session now you no need to pay any fee guys it's a free session i just given three duration three to four weeks it may expand to one more week also this is not exactly but approximately okay so it's you are going to learn lot of things okay so do remember this guys you have to attend the sessions regularly no recorded videos okay right so all the miscellaneous concepts will be covered these are the major concepts names i have written here but actually each and every concept is internally having so many things at crud operations only we have to discuss so many things what is lazy loading what is early loading how can we identify whether it's lazily loaded or early loaded right suppose if we take about relationships here we are also going to apply with the join queries so how can you read join queries with inner joins with outer joins right hope you are getting my point so i am not writing about each and every point here but majorly okay so these are all the concepts the course content what you are going to learn okay guys let's continue the session now so first of all guys i would like to start with the session today okay guys are you ready now okay somebody is asking about any materials or pdg pdf maybe will be provided okay that we will discuss it's not a problem i have already prepared uh, uh one predefined document hybrid material document i will share that through our ashokati portal you don't worry about it okay ah that right, yes okay some of the people knows i think that's the reason why they are asking about hql that's what i said uh, we are we are going to look at all these things okay don't worry about all 
Okay. Somebody is asking about a reason for giving these scores as a free. So you can feel that it is a kind of sharing the knowledge. Right. Okay. Of course, we also have some other paid sessions, but the thing is just we want to share some knowledge. So with, with, with you guys, at least you will, get, you will come to know about this. Right. Okay. So guys, let's start now. Guys, everyone try to understand here. First of all, I would like to start our session with a concept called as what is the meaning of data persistence? Okay, because we are in the concept of what guys? Data access layer. Hibernate can be used as data access layer, right? You know that there is a presentation layer, which is also called as a web layer. So now we are going to understand about what is data persistence. Guys, ready? Now we are going to start with the session. And I want to start with the first concept today. That is called a data persistence. This is what I'm going to start. OK. So first of all, whenever we talk about data persistence, guys, OK, you, you people know that what permanently storing the data is called persistence, right? Persistence represents permanent storage of the data. Okay, permanent storage of the data is called what guys? Persistence, correct? Persistence refers to permanent storage of data. Yes, correct. It's a permanent storage of data. Ah. Everybody listen here. I just want to tell you, to persist the data permanently, there are three core components here. Data persistence is having three core components. Guys, data persistence is having three core components. What are the three core components? Three core components of yes, guys three core components of data persistence. What are the three core components of data persistence, guys? What are the three core components of data persistence? Can you guess what are the three core components of data persistence, guys? Somebody is asking about is the session timing. Guys, remember it is from eight to nine. Timing is eight to nine, guys. Okay, right. The session will be from eight to nine only. Daily it is from eight to nine only, guys. Okay. Ah, uh, guys. Now, can you tell me? Right. I'm answering some of your questions and also I'm giving subject, okay? As a first session, many of the people are having many doubts, right? So I'm just resolving those doubts. So what are the three core components of data persistence? Is anybody having an idea on this? Yeah. Basically, the three core components of the data persistence, guys. First one is data. Okay. The second one is medium i'll tell you what is medium and the third one is storage okay these are the three core components of data persistence data medium and storage now guys we'll understand what this data refers data means what to persist? What you want to persist? That is data. Medium means, can you guess what is medium, guys? Yes. Can you guess what is medium then? 
got it medium means how to persist and now i think you can easily get you can guess what is storage can you guess now guys correct anuradha has said correct stavan has said correct has given correct answer yeah many of the people understood now right because already there are two there are two words came what to how storage means where to persist you are correct guys you people got it clearly very good nice so there are three things guys what are the three components of data persistence is data medium and storage data refers to what what to persist medium refers to what how to persist guys then storage refers to what where to persist okay now now i have a question to you guys okay how will be the data how will be the data you want to persist the data right how will be the data that's a question yeah it is always going to be some interactive session okay you also people need to respond okay you can even now respond through chat box also okay we have enabled chat yes guys everybody data how the data can be guys the data that needs to be persisted right can be raw data or java object basically first understand some critical points okay later we'll go into program that to critical points means i am not talking about uh, you know very very simple things i would like to give you some critically also i would like to improve your skill that's what my requirement okay you 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 guys got my point correct data means it can be the raw data or it can be the java object right what is meaning of persistence persistence means storing the data permanently persisting means storing persist means storing in a storage area that is nothing but like a database or a file that's we'll discuss next but persist meaning is like that okay persist means store save saving the data storing the data that is called persisting persistence means permanent storage of data it's called persistence data can be either raw data or the data can be what java object raw data means what raw data means i can say suppose you are collecting the data from a file in the form of the bytes whatever the data that you are collecting that is actually called as raw data or the data that you have into primitive variables that is actually called as raw data java object is nothing but what the data contained in the object of a java class like a customer object okay like an employee object guys like a policy object so like that so that is called a java object so raw data means the data in primitive variables or the data collected from the file that is the data you want to persist you have the data in variables you want to store it the data into the database tables right that is for raw data or you want to read the data from the file you have a file 
it may be something like a one excel file or maybe like a csv file but you want to read the data from that file and you want to store the data into the database the data which is collected in the raw format like primitive variables like from files that is called raw data got it you people right so raw data means i want to tell you the data in primitive variables or the data collected from a file or any other resource any other resource is the raw data hope you got my point clear everybody that is called raw data then what is java object which is nothing but the data contained in the object of a java class the data contained in the object of a java class is java object so hope you guys understood about what does it mean is it clear guys the data contained in the object of a java class is a java object this is the data we want to persist where can i persist guys i can persist the data into some file or i can store the data into the database so hibernate whatever we are going to discuss in our session guys it is totally related to data access layer of the application it's no way related to business layer of the application or no way related to the presentation layer of the application okay we are always going to deal with data we are always going to deal with data we are always going to deal with the database so hope you guys are getting my point guys you you people are getting my point correct everyone everybody right guys so you can you can i will share you one okay so we have a group okay and you need to join the i mean in chat okay in chat already we have shared okay one whatsapp group for the class updates everybody please join to that i want it uh, the group for class updates and also we shared one more link right one link is shared here everybody in the chat box we can able to see that join this chat join this group whatsapp group and so that you will get all the updates and everything guys okay right now let's continue guys okay let's continue the data you understood about what is raw data and what is a java object and do remember we are always dealing with what we are always dealing with the data access layer we are not dealing with the business logic layer or we are not dealing we are not dealing with the persist presentation layer we are always dealing with the persistence layer okay so that's the reason why every day we are going to talk about the data and we are also going to talk about the database and we are going to use a word like persistence hope you are getting my point right now let me give a diagram in order to understand about the relation between the data medium and storage and i want to use a storage as a flat file right 
where i can store the data guys the data can be stored in file or the data can be stored in what database okay data can be stored in a file or database and you know already since files have some restrictions if you want i'll explain once again why files are not suitable but you know that we are going to permanently store the data in the database now we have to understand about if my storage is a file then how can i store the data if the data is a raw data then how can i store if the data is an object then how can i store hope you are getting my point right and if the storage is a database then how to store my primitive data and how can i store my java object you got something from our sessions right you i think you are getting my point what is the point i'm trying to say so we are going to initially focus on these three components guys what are the three components data medium and storage so i just want to give you guys i just want to give you if you look at this table if you look at the table now here i am calling it as for example data and next here i am calling it as something like uh, what i can say something i want to divide like this so you are just going to get some basics today but most most of the things i'm going to tell you from the next session guys here i'm talking about what data here i'm talking about medium and here i'm talking about storage i want to give you something about this guys here is storage i am taking you know for example the storage is a file storage is a file data for example the data is a raw data raw data is nothing but what gets primitive data otherwise it's a primitive data are the data can be objects na say for example it's a java objects now coming to medium i have a question to all of you because you people already aware of guys you are aware of already knowing about some core java concepts i am expecting right i am expecting that you have some core java concepts okay right guys i am expecting that you have already some core java concepts right now there is a primitive data do you know how do you store this primitive values into a file can you write something in the chat box or in q and a whatever that you are using make it fast guys yes exactly so nice good guys okay you are responding very quickly very good nice yes you know there is a concept in java that is called what you know java io streams is there right java io streams concept is there very nice that is called input output streams okay na guys java io streams concept is there so what you are understanding now if the data is a primitive data then what is a medium that we are going to use is java io streams 
we use io streams for storing the data into the file or reading the data from the files either character streams or byte streams we are going to use okay very nice guys now i like to ask you if the data is java objects then tell me how do you do that sql query doesn't work on files right hope you guys know that sql query doesn't work on files correct yes correct okay niketan has given correct answer mahi has given correct answer and many of some of the people have given a correct answer yes yes guys okay so there is a concept see we cannot use any jpy or something because storage is a file here it's not a database i'm talking about it so here is a concept called as you know the concept right the concept name is called what i think you know about this concept serialization right yes serialization ah huh. this is the concept that you have to use serialization concept you have to use of course serialization deserialization is also there right but just only i'm writing serialization so it means what is a medium medium says about what how to persist data represents what to persist story represents where to persist data is primitive data then use io streams to store the data in a file or to read the data from the file if the data is java objects use what a serialization concept to store that object into your file use opposite deserialization concept to read the data from the file hope you guys got clarity today you got something on this topic today right you you people got some clarity on this topic today today just only we started with the basics like what is our basics now what are the three core components of data persistence guys is it clear is this box is clear is everybody understood this right okay i will use a storage as database tomorrow but i am only talking about today about the file okay nice so guys as a first session we discussed little bit today but from the next session we are going to discuss lot of things okay don't miss the sessions I attend regularly and those who are having these prerequisites you can continue the session from tomorrow and also you can just inform inform about this to your friends so that they can also able to join right okay guys okay they can also take the advantage of this session okay we oftenly offer this kind of sessions as a free sessions so just better you can just inform to your somebody your friends or colleagues who are willing to attend the sessions you can just give an information about this okay guys and uh, uh you people okay initially just after one two days sessions completed so then you will get access to the portal we will give access to our ashoka it portal to uh, to access the class notes and from from then you can start accessing the notes when examples started i will give you the github url and uh, once the example is completed i will upload the application to the github url i will share that url to you and so that from that url you can directly download the application okay so that's the session for today guys hope you guys understood the session and tomorrow we will continue with more discussions okay don't miss the sessions and i would like to tell thank you for attending this demo session or whatever the free session definitely which will help you a lot i am expecting so okay thank you guys thanks for attending this
some people are writing in chat box guys we have already shared one link in the chat box join to that to get the updates on the class notes and everything and uh, session will start at is it possible to start the session at okay you can join at 8 and no issue nitin has asked that question okay and that's for the day guys okay thank you i need to leave to my office thank you